This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Holder. It's Jeff Cutter David. Welcome to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And normally I do a birthday boy for somebody who is alive and teaching. But this year, well, this my fourth and final year, excuse me, doing this. I decided to do a video on this guy who was a rugby superstar by the name of Jonah Lomu. He was considered one of the most first true global superstar of rugby and very influential. He was known for his unprecedented speed, strength, and agility, despite being six foot four and 265 pounds. Lomu looked pretty impressive. He became the youngest ever player to start for New Zealand at the age of 18, 19 years, 45 days in 1994. Finished his international career with 63 caps and 37 tries and put it into the Rugby Hall of Fame. So, anyway. There would be a lot of things going on. All that. Lowe was born in Auckland to Tongan parents. And could speak the Tongan language and all that. He would be educated in an awkward Auckland suburb. And in high school, he actually excelled in athletics. He could run the 100 meters in 11.2 seconds, despite being built like a tank and all that. He actually considered playing rugby more seriously by 1993. And all that. He would be a forward in a sense, but switched to the left wing. All that. So when he debuted against France in 1994, he was 19 years, 45 days, the record holder for the youngest to play for the All Blacks, you know, with the Hakka and a lot of things going on and all that. Lamu marked him. It's hard to believe that Lamu was only 20 years old in the 1995 World Cup when he basically took the rugby world by storm. People thought he didn't deserve to play for the All Blacks in the World Cup in, held in South Africa, that New Zealand had some more experienced players and all that. However, Lobu would prove them all wrong, scoring seven tries in their five matches. He would have two tries, which in rugby is equivalent to football, scoring a touchdown. He had two of them against Ireland in the first match. Didn't have a try in any of the other Ron Robin matches, but in the quarterfinal against Scotland, he had one and crushed England by scoring not one, not two, but four tries to crush England and make New Zealand go to the World Cup final. It was huge and all of that. Lamu received the pass behind him because remember in rugby, you cannot pass the ball forward. You have to pass behind you. You can run with it and then pass it behind you. But anyway, Lamu received the pass behind him, would be two defenders, and ran over my cat. He was free and all that. The try, his first score was to try the tournament. However, you know, he just bulldozed the English defense and all that. New Zealand would get to the World Cup final against South Africa and sadly lost on a, on a drop goal or kind of like a field goal, if you will, in extra time. But still, he made his global impact. Lamu did a job and all of that. In 1996, Lamu would play in the inaugural match of the Tri Nations, which was a deal between South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia to play home and away and see who was the best of those three nations and all of that. Unfortunately, Lomu, at the end of 96, was diagnosed with a rare and serious kidney disorder, which meant he had to take time off sport. He helped New Zealand in the Rugby Sevens event at the Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur. Lomu will be back playing a few matches. And in 1999, he was doing all that. So at the 99 World Cup, he proved better than ever. He put up eight tries in the World Cup. He would score five of them in the three pool matches. Two against Tonga, one against England. What is it with Jonah Lomu in England? 
and two against Italy. The All Blacks would get to the quarterfinals. Lamu would score one try against Scotland. And then in the semifinals, he would score two tries. The only problem was France somehow in some way won the match 43-31 to go to the final. The rumor was circulating that he would be going to the NFL to play American football or play rugby in England. Lamu went back to New Zealand. And by 2000, it was the end of his international career, if you will. All that. So anyway, Lomu would sign with a second division rugby club. And all that. So Lomu had some great tour matches within the Northern Hemisphere, like England and Ireland and all that. Unfortunately, at the end of 2002, he had to end up retiring from international matches because of his illness with worsen and he needed a kidney transplant. Lovey would come back to professional rugby in 2005 and would have to have clearance from the World anti doping Agency because one of his anti-rejection drugs was on the wider list of banned substances. So he would play for a first division club, North Harbour in New Zealand. He was practically a coach and all that. And would play for Cardiff in the off season. In 2006. And all that. He played 10 games in Wales and only had one try. He went back to North Harbour. And all that. There were rumors that Lomu was going to come back and play for the 2007 New Zealand squad in the World Cup. He looked pretty decent. But because he couldn't get a Super Rugby contract, it dashed any hopes of making the World Cup squad. Like he tried and all that. But his failing kidneys would be the death of him, if you will. So he did well internationally, playing 63 times, scoring 37 tries. And England was victimized for the most tries of eight in seven matches, including four in that World Cup semifinal. He had a playing style that was huge. Like, despite being 6'4 and 265 pounds, he could run the 100 meters in 11 seconds. It was just, like, unbelievable. Lamu married a South African and made their home in New Zealand. But they would divorce after four years of marriage. He would marry his second wife in 2003. But because he had an affair, they had to divorce. And the woman he had the affair with, they married in 2011. Living with Nadine and their children, two children. Lomu could speak a lot of languages English, Tongan, French, Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, and Russian. Go to the movie and all of that. Yeah. All right. He would have financial troubles despite making millions of dollars during his rugby career. A lot of things were that his earnings were absorbed by his divorce, his medical bills because of his kidney disease, and failed business ventures. Anyway, yeah, he was diagnosed with a, sin, a kidney disorder at the end of 95, after that World Cup when he crushed England. He had to be put on dialysis three times a week because of his kidney function deterioration. He did get a kidney transplant in 2004. However, in the morning of November 2015, Lomu died unexpectedly in Auckland from a heart attack linked to his kidney disease. He had had dialysis treatments and all of that. There were lots of tributes to him and all of that. He, he even had a national motion passed by the New Zealand Parliament. But Lomu was a late had the legacy. I mean, rugby was a tough sport and all that to play it. And it always will be and always was. So, anyway. That is it for Jordan Lomu. Rest in peace. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond.